Welcome to Business Unveiled Podcast. This is the place where we help overwhelmed, time-starved entrepreneurs like you make the profitable shifts to get more done and get more out of life. I'm your host, Angela Prophet, award-winning eight-figure entrepreneur and CEO. And in every episode of Business Unveiled, I'm bringing you conversations that will give you the expertise and strategies that will scale your team and business so you can get shit done. That's GSD in our world. So get your time back and grow a business that helps you be present in your life. Let's do this, y'all. GSD leader, I wanted to take a quick break from the show to share something super important. Did you know that employee wellness is killing businesses? According to research, 50% of employees miss one to five hours of work every week due to stress. So I'm excited to announce that we just launched a new workshop called Walk and Work. And no, we're not going to be walking and working the entire time. That would be kind of crazy. Walk and Work is an easy solution that offers an in-person workshop and program that boosts employee health, wellness, and engagement. This interactive workshop takes employees through our seven-step process to establishing healthy habits while working from home or from the office so they can be productive while also taking care of themselves. Employee wellness at work is proven to have major benefits. Numerous studies show that healthier, happier team members are more productive in life and business. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Your actions and decisions today will shape the way you will be living in the future. If you'd like to learn more about this workshop, visit walkandwork.co and schedule a time to chat with one of our GSD experts. That's walkandwork.co. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome to Business Unveiled, and we are at a beautiful venue in Chelsea, Michigan that is not even open to the public yet, but you get to see it first. And we're going to talk to the founder today about going from planning to real estate and how it's the exact same thing. (laughs) This is my friend Amy, and we've had so much fun for the past few days. Yes. And one of my friends said, how did you get to Chelsea? I'm like, well, there's this girl, and we're so similar, and we met in Vegas, and she's like, of course, Vegas, and I'm like, but we just, like, click, and we're just excited, and she's like, and that's how you got to Chelsea. I'm like, but I don't think she's from there. No. And so, <laughs> this is Amy. Hi, everybody. Let's just, before we jump in yeah. and start talking about, well, we're going to talk about a lot of things, because we're in this beautiful new space that has been empty for fifth years it's going to be on the in the historical what is it called? we're gonna go for the historical Register? archive I, I think it's called the historical archives is the official title yeah, yeah. so like they're doing amazing yeah. things here how did you go wedding planner into real estate give us like the high level version of your story it wasn't my plan I didn't want to um, to be honest I was super against owning a wedding venue I I had worked for, I've done, I've done event planning for 21 years this year. Talk about aging yourself, right? When you say over two decades. Over two decades. Over two decades. That's a long um, time. That's a real long time. pre princess era. OG years. Does it sound as no, bad does as it, right? Decades. Two decades. Um, but, I, you know, honestly, I dealt with so many venue owners. Not that I didn't respect them, but I didn't align with them at all. And I mm-hmm. just felt like... Gosh, I mean, I enjoyed the planning process. I enjoyed having control over everything. And I felt like so many times you go into venues and there's not a battle necessarily, but there's there's a power struggle, Mm -hmm. right? Of you're representing the client, what the client wants there, and you're working within the um, parameters of the contract. Mm -hmm. And, but there's still this like, this feeling, right? And Mm -hmm. I, I just... I never wanted to have that with my own industry. You know yes. what I mean? Like I never wanted to be that person and not be liked. And I, I've since worked through my issues of being liked, but it's okay. Um, but so again, it wasn't really my plan. So um, for those of you who don't know me, I started, I grew up in Michigan on the west side, um, which you can follow the mission we live on this side. <laughs> Mitten, use your mitten all the time. Um, and honestly, I was 25 at the time uh, before I moved to California, and I was single as a Pringle, and everyone was married, 
street and I was like, I'm not doing this. And you moved and, to And so I moved to LA, I moved to LA. I was like, I'm out. Dude, everyone's like, why didn't you move? I was like, I hate the cold. I still do, fun fact. It's cold. And and I was just I was in a different life moment and everybody else was doing something that I wasn't and I wanted to live differently. So I moved out to LA, ended up in Santa Barbara, really expanded my wedding planning business there. And it was like so perfect because I mean, it is like the mecca of planning. Like yeah. you're at the front of all the trends. You have, you know, wealthy clients. It was, it was just fun. It still is. I'm still a designer out there. It's great. Yeah, she um, flies back and yeah, forth. Yeah, I fly back and forth. Yeah. Um, less often now, but mm -hmm. I still do. And I just, I have a style that I tend to design, which is light, bright, and airy. And so mm -hmm. we felt that we needed to raise our daughter. Our son is at college in Mich or is in California. And so we wanted our daughter to be able to be raised in her family. And so it was really, really important for us to uproot and move her near her cousins her age. And so my plan was just to go back and forth. I had no problems doing that. I was like, cool, I now have a Michigan mortgage um, and I get to live a California lifestyle, which is great, let me tell you. Fabulous. And I get to write it off, which is even yes. better. So I was fine with it, but Charlotte was 14 months and it, and that first year, I think I flew back 14 times in six months. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot to ask of my family and my parents. And so, um, and really the trigger moment was I was sitting at the kitchen table and I was trying to start to transition up just a little bit into the Michigan market, um, just enough so I didn't have to travel as much. And Doug, I finished this pitch. Her husband. Sorry, my husband Doug pitched and I got off the phone and I was just drained. Yeah. And I don't normally get drained. And I was just drained and he said, I can't do it anymore. And I said, what? And he said, I cannot sit and hear you talk about something that you're brilliant at. He's, he's like my biggest cheerleader. He's awesome. Everybody loves Doug. He's awesome. Um, but he's like, you're brilliant at it and they don't even know what you're talking about here. Yep. Because it's so true. it hasn't been brought here and you're never gonna get the client or be able to continue to hone your skills if you don't build what they're, what's coming next. And I was like, I don't wanna own a venue. He's like, you don't really have a choice. You yeah. either go back and forth or you're gonna have to do something. And so, yeah, so I, I, I put the thought the process to the back of my head and I said, no, I'm good. And then I slowly came, Doug always tells me things, I get like, I push back because I feel like I have better ideas. And they're both green, by the way. Right. Which yes. is really fun. Which is fun. I'm, a, I'm, I'm gold truly, but like we definitely, she I'm, my green, too, yeah, though. but my green is like very high as well. So that's where we actually are very aligned. Um, but I have to like mull on his ideas and like come back to the table and be like, you're right. Because you're green. Because I just had to, you know, just don't expect me to be all happy on your great idea that was better than mine. And, um, but I'll admit when I'm wrong. And so I was like, you know what? I think you're right. And so, Wedding didn't always pay the bills. I will say this. I have a background in finance for many years. Angela and I love each other because we have like the same process. We both worked in a hospital. Yes. We both have been planners for we 20 were years. Gymnasts. We were gymnasts. We both owned four Tauruses as oh our, my first God, our first car. car. We yes. both had our four Tauruses as our first car. We have many, many similarities of which we're the same. We fly a lot. Uh, fly a lot. We, were, we love to fly a lot. Um, we like to travel. We like to travel. She's going to Paris. So. But um, my big thing was like, I'm fine. So I, that being said, I was a financial planner for many years. And so money, like I'm a money girl. Again, I have that green personality. I like I things out on paper. So to me, I was like, cool, if we do this wedding planning or venue thing, like where am I going to do it? And I'm from Kalamazoo area, which is a real name. Yes, apparently that's a thing. Yes, there really is a Kalamazoo. And that's where it was going to be. I don't even know if I've told you this mm -mm. story, but we had a property in Kalamazoo and we were going to do micro weddings because this is before COVID, which okay. is the irony is not lost on me now because it probably would have slayed as well. But um, we were hot in the negotiations and lawyer talks and all the things. And I just felt that these building owners were not willing to meet me halfway mm -hmm. on reasonable things in a building. And so... This was beginning of March, 2020, and I was like, okay, I'm really busy for two weeks, I'll get back to you. And then on March 11th, the whole world changed, and I was like, okay, this is interesting, <laughs> nice pause. And so they were holding the contract changes, so we were waiting on their lawyers, and so then it came back to me, and COVID's like full on, I was like, I think we're gonna take a pause on this. Yes. <laughs> and so that allowed me the space then to look at my own area and really sit back and go, okay, and so I, I, I decided, like, if I'm going to go into real estate, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to find the right spot. I'm going to be financially driven on this. And I'm going to find where the, where the market is. And so 
I did some pretty crazy math and found out that Chelsea is basically the mecca in Michigan of where you should be having a wedding venue. <laughs> and there's been a data. lot of data that I'm data actually studies. not going to get into because it's my secret formula. And um, yeah, and so here we are. And I walked, it was funny, we, everything was shut down. Like it was COVID, it was a height of COVID. It was May of 2020. And I, we had an almost two year old, well, we, she just turned two. And she was bored off her gourd. And for those of you who don't know Charlie Grace, follow her. She's so stuff. cute. She's the cutest thing ever. Um, but we were walking in Chelsea because we lived in the neighboring town. I was like, let's go to a new town. Let's just walk around outside. And there is this building that we are not occupying. And it was like singing to me. That's the only way I can say yeah. it. It's like, it's singing to me. Yes. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. <sighs> and I was like, dang it, Doug, you're right. And so met with the building owner, found the literal unicorn building owner. And um, yeah, that was our first gig. And then now we have our second gig, our clock tower location that we're in right now. It's our newest venue. Uh, we've been here, well, we've been in, under construction almost, it'll be a year in May. Um, and yeah, it, we're right around the corner from our original location. Uh, and if you had asked me 48 months ago what I would be doing right now, it would not be this. Neither of us <laughs> would ever really. The furthest thing from this point ever. Yeah. Like ever. I would still be doing big scale event build out in California. That, yeah. that is what I'd be doing. Yeah. And chasing every accolade there is and like going for bigger and bigger. And so to be sitting here like arguing about HVAC systems, mm -hmm. didn't think that was ever in my career. So my question for you being green, the, and we were talking about this this morning, mm -hmm. greens sometimes don't get out of their own way quick mm -hmm. enough because they want to finish everything. They want to finish the business plan or the process or the numbers or it's never going to be the right time or the good time. And we were saying, you know, I was telling her, I'm like, just get out of your own way because, you know, we have some greens and they've taught me to slow down and be still and assess and mm -hmm. do your research and have your data. And when you have all that, but you still don't feel like it's quite ready, yeah. you just have to throw yourself into the fire. And sometimes it's better that way because what you think you need to be saying and releasing the market doesn't respond to it. Yeah. And so if you release in phases, and you do a great job at that. So she, she was telling me she used to be really orange. Super orange. But Super you said something really important. You know at this point in your life right now and everything mm -hmm. that you've taken on, you have to act gold. I have to act gold. And I know that. Yeah. I, if, to mm -hmm. get shit done, mm -hmm. and it's not fun, mm -hmm. and that's not operating at your happiest, but you are making sacrifices, yeah. but still you're with your husband and your yep. child more than you would have been going yep. back and forth. But sometimes we make sacrifices and we know we have to act a different color yep. and put a different hat on at different points in our life. And so being gold for so many years, for so long, I know that a process has to be put mm -hmm. in place and it has to be updated and it has to be changed. If somebody complains about something, if something falls through the cracks, like those are opportunities to get better. So as a green to like do all this stuff really quick. Mm -hmm. And she didn't tell you, they bought a house, sold a house. Yeah, bought a house. We're in Hawaii for sold vacation. House. Yeah, we're sitting in a, a beach like, house. We're like, let's off our That's house. That's a very bought land. Thing. Bought land. And it, oh, I can be impulsive. When I'm on vacation, I'm yeah. very impulsive. But I'm going to Puerto Rico on Sunday. Well, I'm sorry ahead of time to all of my staff. I'm sure I'm going to come up with some crazy outlandish idea that we will all have to implement when, when I get back. Because sit down and so. So how do you get out of your own way? Like, how did your, you, you're like, okay, I'm a wedding planner, yeah. I faced this, now I want to take it here, and my husband is right, my other green husband is right, but you, yeah. you've done it quick. I feel like when you've done something long enough and you feel confident in it, mm -hmm. like I know I know money and I know how to make money, and I'm very confident in that because that's what I've done for years is help business owners make money really quickly and turn yeah. their businesses around, so I know how to do it. I felt like my dreams were being put on hold because of the expectations I was serving with others. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if I got out of my own way, I could still change people's lives. I could still make dream wedding. In fact, more of them happen every yeah. year. I could hire full-time employees, change their lives. Like I, I, I felt, I, I came to the realization that I could do more by owning a venue yeah. because I could shift an entire industry 
in a geographical area by being a leader and doing something so vastly different than everybody else that that I would stand out and they would say, oh, well, why are you doing this? Oh, well, this as a planner is how I did this and this is why I'm getting this. And it just elevates the industry as a whole. So I just, honestly, I came to a point where I'm like, quit being so selfish. Like you have been learning a skill set for two decades, like give it to people. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Don't hoard it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to do that is to own a venue and mm -hmm. to showcase something so differently than everybody else that, you know, instead of just being a new shiny object, like never be the new shiny object that can get attention, but to create a, a, a raving fan, you have to create something that is so uniquely different mm -hmm. that they're just like, I can't live without it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I joke like literally 53 year old men like are obsessed with our wedding venue. Yeah. I mean, we were buying our, our van, they our got shuttle a big bus, van. A van. Never thought I'd buy one of those either. I let me tell you. I luggage because I thought I they were bringing a van to pick us up at the airport. <laughs> Not an SUV, <laughs> right? <Lexus. laughs> I was like, sorry, um, they have van is back. Communication, like communication is important. Um, but you know, we're in there, and he was this guy. So funny. He's like, "Oh, you're from Chelsea." I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Oh gosh." He's like, "I just went to the coolest wedding there." I'm like, "Oh, cool. Tell me about it." He's like, "Yeah, it was just awesome, and it was this cool backyard." And I'm like, "Where was I?" He's like, "Downtown Chelsea." I'm like, "Really?" I think the guy knows my name. He's clearly not looking at the piece of paper. Yeah. And I'm like, cool, cool, yeah, we own a wedding venue too. Oh, really, where? I'm like, Chelsea. And he's like, wait. I'm like, was it the Collins off Main? He's like, yes. I'm like, that's mine. And he's yeah. like, no way. Yes. And uh, he's like, I've literally told everything, every person I know about this place. He's like, I've never gone. He's like, he's like I'm a 53-year-old white dude. He's like, I don't even like weddings. I feel dragged to weddings. Yeah. He's like, but I swear I've told everybody about your venue because it was built for me. And I was just like, oh, yes. because that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. Like, it's about the couple, but it's for your guests. I mean, you're putting on a very expensive party. Mm -hmm. Let us help you make you look good. Yeah. And I can do that as a planner, but oh my gosh, I can do it such a better way as a venue owner. When you own it. Yeah. So you're big on brand loyalty, Huge. but you have no signage <laughs> in front of the venue. I don't like signs. Which is strategic. Yes. So brand loyalty can mean that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So like, what is that to you? And then what is the deal with like the sign thing? <laughs> okay, so I'll, honestly the sign thing became because honestly in COVID we were new mm -hmm. and we still followed all the rules to a T, but we were in a new community who didn't know me. Yeah. And I lovingly say Chelsea is like honey and vinegar. It's yeah. like you're one of the two people, you know? Yeah. You're Spend from there? Yeah. Or you're not. Or you're not. Yeah. And I'm not. And they have no loyalty <laughs> to me. And um, and so I just kind of wanted to run incognito for mm -hmm. a year and prove we weren't the noisy place. We weren't disrespectful. We weren't ruining the town. You're ruining opportunity <laughs> but not for everybody's massive seen. industries, you guys. Oh. So I pull up. So we're driving. It's nighttime when I get mm -hmm. here. And there's these huge towers. And I love, like, tall things. And I love to go to the top the tall things and so I'm immediately thinking like how can we get up there and there's no like ladders or anything I'm like we have to do a TikTok in front of that and I'm like we'll do it on the ground with snow that's fine jiffy like if you yeah. like cook, jiffy the cornbread, cornbread and biscuit company yeah is literally right our neighbors like you can Massive see it right there automotive industry mm -hmm. it's huge I, I mean it's it's huge so when people are like you're going to Detroit or Chelsea yeah but when you start to google like the top industries mm -hmm. and the top and the revenue of the city and like who are the leading because I'm a nerd and I'm like who's an EO there like I mm -hmm. want to see who, who's running the town there's some big big heavy brands huge they come out of here huge and so I, we just wanted to operate in Canito I just I wanted to prove instead of having lip service like prove it and so that's really how it started mm -hmm. we do need to put the numbers above our just our the thing. numbers we just the numbers but then it became this thing where people would like peek in the windows and be like what is this place and they'd look it up and you know our dearest uh Callie who works for us like she didn't even know when she was about you know she long story short basically she like found us by googling us because she walked in and looked in the windows and she now works for us. Um, but it, I like the intrigue with it. I like the lack of like responsibility to people mm -hmm. with it. I mean, yeah. people give me a hard time, there's no signs. I'm like, I know, but like, it's kind of fun Brilliant. that there's no signs. Um, but up. brand loyalty to me is really big because I mean, I'm, I'm obsessed with brands in a good way. Like 
I like Pottery Barn because I know I'm gonna get a good product there. I know I'm gonna like the, the quality where it is. I always drive a Lexus because I know it doesn't break down and if it does, they're gonna have it under warranty and it's gonna be taken care of. I fly Delta, I like points. And I tell people, I'm like, listen, when you're not being treated the way you wanna be treated, at a brand, like do not give them your money. Right. <laughs> like just your money, and coming from a background of finance, like your money means so much to, like that's how they operate. And so when yeah. I tell people, I'm like, you wanna move the needle, like stop hedging, le passing legislation and stop spending at that company mm -hmm. and they will immediately shift their policy. You don't have to write a, a piece of legislation to change them. Change the money flow and mm -hmm. you will see the shift, mm -hmm. right? And so, I have chosen to always be the person who becomes fiercely loyal to a brand because I know they got my back. So yeah. because of that, I'm a high flyer at Delta, which means I have a lot of points, which means when I'm on a plane, they say, hello, Mrs. Collins, how are you today? And here's your champagne. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that because they respect me for upset, being obsessed with their brand yeah. and vice versa. And so we love our couples so unconditional. Like it's such a big deal to be a Collins couple. It's not just one day. They're in Facebook oh, groups. We bring them back. We have cocktail hours for them. We have alumni events. Like it's not just one day because they are loyal to our brand and we want to be just as loyal to them. And so I just tell people like, get yourself behind a brand that you're really, really comfortable with and rack up those reward points because they're there for a reason and I love to use them. So yeah, That's I love awesome. it. That's awesome. Yeah, be loyal to your people. So we met in Vegas. Yes. And you just invested in a GSD yes, workshop. We did. The two full days. Two full days. Two go full all days. in, people. Don't go half on Invited industry, mm -hmm. people you're friends with, mm -hmm. family, family brought family. Um, you know, the community was invited. And and we were also celebrating International Women's Day. Woo. Yay, go us. And what was your top takeaway from it all? Like investment wise, that's the, it's very expensive. Yes. I think you have, mm -hmm. how many people were from your team? Six or seven? From my team alone, we had four of us. Including but, you. Including me, but yeah. um, we invited our friend doors. That was that's big right. for us. So, yes. And hosted them. And hosted them. So we, the uh, why? big thing for us was from a marketing perspective mm -hmm. was if, you're, if we're sending you business and you're collaborating with us as far as a you know a preferred vendor i want to know that you're investing in yourself too because at some point we're going to grow and if you're not building your brand alongside of the speed of which we like to build our brand very which is fast. very fast um you're not going to be able to capacitate the leads i send you no. unless you work on your company mm -hmm. and unless you rip the onion layers of your own life off and, and see the gaps and come to terms with the fact that, okay, well, we're sucking at this part of our company and we need to make those changes. And so I just, you know, I told you, I was like, I think this is a really important test to give to our preferred vendors and say, hey, like invest in yourself because we want to bring these incredible resources to you. And to see who took us up on that was really telling, you know, yeah. like who wanted to invest in themselves? Like mm -hmm. who looked at this as a good opportunity where it's like, I'm spending a lot of, a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like most people's annual yeah. marketing budget was spent yes. on one day. Yes. Most, I mean, I would probably say the vast majority, maybe two or three years of their marketing budget on one day. Yeah. But it was important to me because it was like, how do we get these people to the same finish line we're trying to get to simultaneously? Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage you to definitely invest in the people that you need alongside your brand to build it too. These are the people we need alongside us too. Mm -hmm. And I need them to be just as invested in their brand as, as we are in ours. And we're obsessed with it. So do you feel like, because again, it's very, not only expensive monetarily, but, but to have four or five people oh, yeah. from mm -hmm. the break, taken out of the business. So the business kind of shuts down for two days mm -hmm. and, and hosts this event that, that you've invested in. Would you say now just spending those two days that everyone's more aligned mm -hmm. and when you when you have clarity, you have speed. Mm -hmm. You can all go faster together. Oh, completely. If that was the goal. Yeah, and I also think like, and it wasn't just that day because Callie has been working behind the scenes. Like, I love her so constantly. much. Constantly. Constantly on this project for the last two months, three months. And so it was a huge mm -hmm. investment of time. It was a mm -hmm. huge investment of emotional, like honestly. But I wanted to, and I, and I said this, if it's just my team there, I'm okay with this mm -hmm. because I know my team wants to grow, you know? So it was worth it just to have my team in the room. 
But now as a team, we were, <laughs> we were laughing and we did the colors because yes. I totally had one of our teammates so wrong. And it makes so much sense now. <laughs> So it's like candy is the orange, and I thought for sure she was a green. And you had done true colors before. I'd done true colors in before. In like a different capacity. In a different capacity at Junior League. I had done it. I was also shocked that I was a gold now because I always thought I was an orange and green. I am now a gold and green, which I And you can realized. change. Depending you can. Depending on where you, what you yeah. need in your life. You do. Moment. And right now, I have to be super serious. I write really big, scary checks every single day. Every single day. She got a treadmill desk. I got a treadmill desk. That was like. One of the scariest things for me to purchase was like one of the least expensive things I bought this year. But it was for you. But it was for me. And, and I have to be that. healthy. If yes. I'm not healthy, the company is not going to be healthy. It's literally riding on me. Like my name is attached to this brand. So I was like, all right, I got to lose these 30 pounds. I'm, I'm turning 40. Like this is, this is happening. And so I invested in the treadmill desk and we're, we set our goals. But yeah, I just, to just, I, I mean, I know my team really, really well. We're really, really passionate about understanding our personality types and our Enneagrams, and, and it really has helped. Where I found it was huge was getting to know my vendors mm -hmm. and, and learning, like, ooh, Melanie's a goal or a, uh, an orange. Did not know yeah. that. That is so good for me to know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Brandon, we knew it was an orange, but like, you know, yeah. and like, but to, and, uh, you know, to define those personalities, I was like, oh my gosh, I am going to be able to work with them so much better mm -hmm. as a venue owner. We already had a great relationship, but now I feel like it's deep. It's like we've all taken time out of our lives to invest in our companies, to take our staff and our people and say, I'm willing to invest in me. Now, how do we brand eat with each other mm -hmm. to get there? Like, how do we go there next? Mm -hmm. And so that was, I think, probably my biggest takeaway to just say, wow. I, and I didn't expect that to be such a like an emotional thing, but to sit there and go, wow, all of these vendors want to believe in their own companies yeah. like it it made me really happy and, and proud of them yeah, and it was so cool because it went layers deep like mm -hmm. some people came back and they're like I did it with my kids last night yeah. and I shared it with my family and then like one of the ladies that was there who's a full designer yeah. her daughter she was like oh she's wearing and then she sends her a selfie in the mirror she's pregnant with like her orange <laughs> jumpsuit on <laughs> just, it was I'm hilarious. an orange mom and she literally was an orange it was just cool like I think anytime you communicate with people and learn more about yourself, like there's nothing, I mean, I love personality tests and I love testing stuff, so I'm all about it. But I think that was my biggest takeaway, which I didn't expect to be my biggest takeaway, mm -hmm. by the way. I, I know my colors, I know all that kind of stuff. I do it all the time. But I, I didn't expect to resonate so heavily with what my audience was coming out like, mm -hmm. which I'm sure companies feel that all the time. Yeah. So as leaders, Sometimes you think you know everybody, but you know, just seeing them in a different light is always fun. So, yeah. And so imagine, I mean, you're already happy. You're doing what mm -hmm. you want to do. You've got the people around you. Imagine now that you can like customize it even more, mm -hmm. how much happier people really are. It sounds so cheesy. It's like, oh, it's too good to be true. Or, you know, a little life over here, but, but it's true. Yeah. Oh, it I really agree. Is. I agree. And I think that Business owners in general and leaders in general, you love to say it too, it's always our fault. And it is. It always, it always is, is my fault. And my staff, I'm sure, will back me up on this. I, when something goes wrong, I'm like, it's my fault. That was my fault. I didn't put it into a procedure. I get you guys forgot this, but this is it. The book falls with us. And I see too many leaders blaming their people. Who did it? Why did it happen? It's your fault. I've told you this before then maybe you didn't do a very good job hiring. I mean, it can go all the way that deep. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't actually looked in the mirror in a while. Maybe you're not a very nice person, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes those are the difficult decisions that you have to make as a boss and, and go, I, okay, it needs to be me. Mm -hmm. The change has got to happen for me. And so I just think anytime yeah. we invest in us, like there's no real way to get through with something like that and not have like a, oh, it's my fault at some point mm -hmm. moment. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that if it is, like, you probably really shouldn't be in leadership, but no. you know what I mean? If you can walk through that and just be like, oh, I'm, I'm just, everything's hunky-dory. I'm so good at my job and everybody sucks. You know, yeah. I just think those type of events and the, and the GSD model is so good at bringing out your people, why leadership needs to always take the accountability, how we can adjust what we're doing, and honestly, just get better. I don't understand why people don't want to get yeah. better. Like, just be better than you were yeah. yesterday. But 1%. Just not everybody better. wants the same thing, you know?
And that is a great way to end, to make yes. sure that you talk to the person that you want to work with. Yes. So if you have a beautiful venue, yep. and if you're in Chelsea, or what are the other two towns around Ann here? Arbor, Ann Detroit. Arbor, Detroit. Yes. Yeah, we're in, the, if you, we're in the greater Detroit area. Greater but. Detroit area. Yep. We'll have in the show notes the links and the when it is going to open. Yeah. Can you say a date? Or yeah, yeah. Our first wedding is in April 29th here. Okay. Yeah. So, so. follow us. Follow our Instagram yes. at the Collins off Maine. Yes. Callie does an incredible job carrying our she material does. on there. Um, and we got a lot of fun stuff while we saw it going on. And I'm headed to the airport. Yay. Yay. Thank but you so, so sad. much. Thank you so much for being here. I know. I love you. I want to love you. And I, I love what you've grown here. It's just, I'm so like, proud and like I feel like I've known you forever and I'm like yeah yeah and this and this and this and it's like I'm, I can just you know when you could just feel the energy when mm -hmm. you walk into a room and mm -hmm. out of the room it's like mm, they're gonna nail it and it's gonna be amazing yeah yeah I'm so Thanks. proud thank you so much for watching and be sure to tune in next week or listen to another episode of Business Unveiled bye y'all that's it for this week's episode of Business Unveiled now that you have all the tools that you need to conquer the world and GSD, get shit done, would you share this with your friends and fellow business leaders? One thing that would really, really help us and help new listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a comment in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you tune in and listen to Business Unveiled. You can check out the show notes at AngelaProfit.com slash podcast and link up with us on social media so you can share your biggest insights and I want to know your aha moments. Until next week, remember the profitable shifts and structures you're creating in your business help you be more present in your life. So get out there and GSD.